Alright, so for this video you'll be needing some white spray paint, white, black and blue acrylic paint, a glue gun, some hot transparent plastic, a sister, steel wire, a brush, two tongs, one for clipping, one for bending, and then a wooden block, a bit larger than this one, but it's what I had, and then you can be making this all down here. So, let's get going. So before we start crafting, I wanted to show you the setup of the portal on uh, on my battle grid. I'm not going to show you how to make the stones, I can't do that. Uh, but I just wanted to show how much atmosphere this portal adds to a battle grid. And should you like the battle grid, then I got a guide for that one as well. Just check my channel for it, then you'll find it. But uh, let's get crafting here. So I started off with the plastic casing uh, from uh, the glue gun. Um, and it's, it's fairly thick and there's some good mass to it and that's important because in, when you add hot glue onto plastic it'll have a tendency to curl especially if, if it's very thin so here you can see I got, I'm bending some thick steel wire uh, it's some old stuff that I got my hands on and I'm just making a rough measure of, uh, of the oval shape I cut out in the plastic and then when I got uh, it fairly decent uh, I went and uh, and made uh, a bend on the steel wire and here I'm just going to measure it again uh, after just I got, I'm okay with the I'm fairly certain that this frame size is okay that's why I made the bend uh, below kind of locking uh, the frame in shape and now you'll see I'm just measuring again uh, the plastic oval should be a fairly bit larger uh, than the metal frame because uh, you want to apply you, you want to glue it onto, so you need to be able to have the glue run on both sides of the, of the middle. And here I'm satisfied with it, so I'm locking it in place by, um, uh, by using the tong to, uh, to force the steel so close together that it, it won't move on its own anymore. And then I'm making a very, very rudimentary foot or a base uh, to the frame. Uh, and then I'm just adding a little here and there, uh, adjusting it so it'll be able to stand on its own. That becomes uh, relevant later on. So it just have to be okay. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. You just need it to be able to stand on its own so you can add some hot glue and build a base uh, through that. Um, but I think we're about to a place where, where it'll be able to... Yeah, there we go. Um, so it's a very simple form here at first. Um, there's really not much science to it. You just take some steel wire and then you bend it into place. If you only have thin steel wire, you can double it up and, and twisting it so it becomes thicker and then you should be able to do with, with some thinner wire as well. Here I'm using a, a wooden block as um, as foundation to, uh, to put the plastic and the frame down onto so I First of all, I can use both hands onto the glue gun and it'll rest on its own, but also so if there is a little bit of curling uh, to the plastic, it will be minimal. And you can see I added uh, some extra glue to the center. That is because I need the frame to, uh, to be glued onto the plastic, of course, but I also want the portal to have this illusion of bending reality. And if I only had a flat surface in the center, I would have to do a lot of work when painting it. But when I make these ripples in there, it will add some texture to it, which just gives me a lot of value for free. So that will make the paint job a lot easier. Um, simply because there will be uh, a lot of shapes which can grab some shadows. And um, you'll see that later on in the video. So here, um, the both sides are fairly well at this point. I need uh, I need to build the base now, and then I need to make sure that the sides are okay. There'll be some places where the the plastic the flat plastic is showing through, um, and there might be some places where I need to add a little a bit of more mass uh, in order to fill out the frame. But here I'm just building it up. Um, if the port if your portal is hovering far at a fairly far above the ground, you might have a go at several sessions for this because when you add hot glue onto hot glue, it uh, the warmth of it, the heat will be spreading and then the glue will soften up. 
so you can end up with just a giant flat puddle of, of glue uh, if you aren't patient in this regard. So yeah, just some scaling here to see how it's okay. And here I'm, I'm checking the sides and uh, for any uh, small slips of, of both glue and if there are some spaces where I want to, to fill out the frame. You can see I'm adding some extra glue onto the sides here, making sure there's I don't see any annoying sharp uh, lines from uh, from the plastic in the center. And here we are fast forwarded. So now it is primed in white uh, with white spray paint, and you'll see why I chose to go with white um, in a second. Some people prefer gray, some like black primer. I really like white because. I'm using wet paint um, and then blending it onto the thing that I'm painting. So I'm mixing the paint right onto, onto the surface. You can see here, I start out with the black and blue and then I just added white to my brush and worked on the center. And it creates a really nice mixing effect. Same here, making uh, a very dark frame because I want to go from almost utter darkness and then to a blinding white in the center. That was the idea for for the for the painting of it. Um, and also that could symbolize the bending of reality that you go from complete utter darkness and and down to uh, to this blinding white light that you have to step into in order to go through a portal or something spills out from it. So here we're slowing down because I want you to uh, put, uh, pay some attention to how the the paint is mixing. I, I watered it down at first and now I added some white to my brush and then I'm just blending it straight onto the blue at first. Uh, that was already on the, um, on the on the bottle. And you can see it's blending really nicely. Um, you have to be careful. If you do this too much, it will just you will just get a one uh, almost solid color, which you don't want. You want a lot of play and a lot of variation to the color. And that, together with the the ripples of the of the model, uh, will give you some really nice ripple effects. You can you can already see it here because I have not spent a lot of time blending the paint or creating different variations, but you can still see there's a lot of variations to to the to the portal already. Here I'm just adding some more black to the sides and then painting the base. And you could call it done by this point. I, I, w I wouldn't be ashamed to put that on my table. Um, I actually really like that it's not a complete blinding white in the center, but I had a plan and I stuck to it, which I kind of regret here in hindsight, because it becomes it, it became too white. Um, and I added too much white onto it. It's not bad as it is right here, and I'm not disappointed with the result, but I probably liked it better when it was just going into a light blue. So you, you'll be able to see the difference here. I'm painting on one side now, uh, adding this almost complete white to it. And then when you see the other side, uh, make a judgment of, of which side you, side you would prefer more. So it's still, it's not bad. Um, I would probably just like a little bit more blue to it. Um, but you learn while, while crafting and then you, uh, you figure out something you want to change and then you can go again for another time. And it doesn't take too long to make these. So uh, the portal is painted and I'm just finishing off giving it the base, giving it another coat. And yeah, then we're pretty much done here. And as you can see, it didn't really take long. Uh, the most time we spent was waiting for, for paint to dry and glue to, to cool off. And here's the setup uh, of the portal on my battle grid. So just wanted to show how much atmosphere is on it. And well, it's made out of scraps and it really didn't take long. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, found some inspiration of your own and perhaps even learn a thing or two. Should you be interested in supporting the channel, aside from just throwing a like and subscribing, then I'm a published author. I write books, I paint illustrations, and I got a few other things in the works as well. You can see some of my work at tscout.com. You can also find links to social medias, as well as places where you can buy books and artwork. 
Any support will be greatly appreciated, even if it's just a click or two to help fight the algorithm. So thanks for watching once again. Hope to see you again soon.